This course covers statistical process control from entirely practical approaches. It takes you from the concept of a process and a system to control charts to process capability analysis and finally to the Six Sigma applications in business and manufacturing. The speaker and author of this course is one of the top statisticians and quality control experts particularly in the fields of textiles, cotton processing, non-woven, spinning, weaving, knitting, and apparel industries. Dr. Yahya el was a professor of statistics, statistical process control, and quality control for 25 years at Auburn University, Alabama, USA before he led his own consultant company in 2013. The key two points that we indicated in the last few slides is that a control chart is a direct result of two basic statistical techniques. Number one, descriptive statistics as represented by the features of the uh, normal distribution. And number two, inferential statistics as represented by the test of hypothesis. Now we move on uh, to uh, talk about more practical aspects here, which are the rationale subgroups those samples that we collect on daily basis. How we go about selecting these samples? Expect to see some practical guidelines as well as some theoretical that will help you in selecting an appropriate uh, or rational subgroups. Uh, rational uh, subgroups are the samples that we collect on timely basis, daily or weekly or shift by shift for monitoring the process. In constructing a control chart, we need these rational subgroups. The question here is how we go about selecting these samples? What are the basic criteria of selecting these samples? Well, obviously, like any sample selection, there are always two issues that have to be considered. One is the sample size, and the other one, in especially with control chart, is the sampling frequency. That is, how often do we select a sample? And obviously, the sampling frequency is directly associated with the time frame we have here. But not always, because here the time frame is day by day. So even within that day, the question becomes, if the day consists of three shifts, operating shifts, then uh, when can we select the sample? How frequent? Should we take it from each shift? Uh, if this is a week, then we have uh, seven days to deal with. So should we take uh, 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 every day uh, equal uh, uh, sub 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 group or sub sub samples as we we may want to call it. Uh, so at the end of the week we have samples collected over a week uh, period. That is the sampling frequency issue. So two basic issues that an analyst or quality control uh, implementer has to deal with sample size and sampling frequency. Let us first discuss the sample size issue. How big a sample should be? Well, in the statistics course, we discussed ways to determine the minimum sample size uh, in general. But the methods we discussed in the statistics course were really associated m mainly with a, with a snapshot of the population. That is, somebody is trying to take one sample from a population and is trying to analyze the sample so uh, uh, he or she can estimate from the statistics of the sample uh, the parameters of the population. Here the story is quite different because sample size here 
is something that we have to consider not only as a snapshot but on daily basis or weekly basis and obviously when we speak of sample size we are not talking about only the number of specimens or the number of observations we're talking about in, uh, other issues such as economical issues uh, uh, every time we do sampling every time we collect the samples it cost it cost human efforts human resources it cost financially it cost in testing the samples so the sample size is not only a quality control issue and the validity or reliability issue it's also a cost issue and what if we have a destructive test that we have to deal with such as car collision or airbags uh, performance where uh, 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 the product being tested uh, will have to be destroyed as a result of testing then we don't have too many options so sample size I repeat is a statistical issue as well as in an economical issue and that is where judgment becomes extremely important in general all people statisticians or not statisticians will agree that the larger the sample size the better after all larger sample size may be associated with more information about the process but we mentioned the economical issues but even statistically when you select a large sample size then you are more than likely going to select or sorry detect the shift from one point of the chart to another a shift in a control chart is really the difference between say this point here and this point here we call this a shift or a change or from this point here to this point here the larger the sample size the more likely or the bigger the chance that you will detect this shift as we mentioned a few minutes ago in the theoretical basis a larger sample size means more tight uh, uh, control limits and this is by virtue of the fact that the control limits are at a distance from the center line uh, uh, of the standard error which is really uh, 3 times sigma over the square root of n so if n is large that means this distance would be small that means the control limits will be tight a large sample size would mean tight limit the larger the sample size the better the chance of detecting the shift that is the first rule of thumb that we have to keep in mind on the other hand, if we take in a small sample, we will expect wide limits. And the wide limits means larger scale. And the quite often, one cannot realize the significance of the shift as a result of selecting a small sample leading to wide limits. Very good. It's important, therefore, that when we select a sample size, that we keep in mind the size of the shift that we are trying to detect. We just explained to you the theoretical basis. Larger sample size, tight limits. Smaller sample size, wide limits. This is the shift represented in this graph you can see here the shift is the difference between uh, the heights of two points on the chart it means that we have to anticipate things or we have to realize the purpose of the control chart if we anticipate large shifts in the process from one point to another and those shifts will be very obvious then in this case it is smart 
to use a small sample. If the process shift is large, we use a small sample. If the process shift is anticipated to be very small, then we use a large sample. And this takes us to these simple rules that are associated with the sample size or the subgroup size. Large process shift, anticipated, means small n because the, the process is going to shift from one point to another dramatically anyway and the small sample will do. And we understand already that a small n means wide limits. Small process shift, we take a larger sample because we will have tight limits and in this case, in a small process shift, the only way to detect it is to tight the limits and use a larger sample to be truly representative of the process. We should also determine the frequency. That is how frequent should we take the sample. And this is really not a statistical rule. Is that large subgroups may be taken at low frequency or long intervals. So we can take large samples, large sample size, but less frequent. The other alternative is to take a small subgroup, that small sample sizes, but are at high frequency, short intervals. And I think you can see the difference there. So we're debating here one of two alternatives, either large samples at a, at a wider interval of time or a small sample at a shorter interval of time. Most of the industry practice use the second alternative. That is not a statistical issue. That is a judgmental issue. That is a, real, a realization of your process. For example, if you don't anticipate the process to change very frequently, or a short period of time, then in this case, you need to have your control chart instead of daily or shift by shift, you may want to make it weekly. And in a week period, you take a large sample or bi-weekly. On the other hand, if you anticipate a frequent shift in the process, then in this case, you may want to reduce your interval, make it daily or shift by shift. And in this case, you take a small size. But as I said early, most industrial practice use the second alternative. That is more frequent monitoring using small sample instead of less frequent monitoring using large samples. This is the general guidelines that we see in most companies or organizations implementing SPC. In practice, as I said early, the question of sampling frequency and the question of sample size uh, is, is based or should be addressed in view of many factors. And as you can see here, uh, these factors are hardly statistical. The cost of sampling, how much it cost? And the cost of testing, how much it cost to test? The loss associated with allowing the process to operate out of control, because keep in mind, as we go to smaller sample size or less frequent sampling, some changes in the process are likely to happen that will go undetected. The production capacity, are we having a massive production or are we having a small operation? The pro probability of various types of process shifts, as I mentioned early on, are you anticipating uh, large shifts in your process from day to day or week to week, or are you anticipating small shifts or slight changes? Stability, in other words. And of course, the quality status of a company. Some companies produce products that do not even need any quality monitoring. That is a real important issue. 
So these factors have to be taken into consideration. And that is where uh, the difference between a quality control practitioner uh, uh, or, uh, and the quality control uh, uh, person who is fresh, uh, new in the, in the field and uh, 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 reading from books and uh, did not have enough practical experience. Because as you can see here, cost is a real issue in many aspects. Some tests, as I mentioned, are destructive. In this case, you're going to have to accommodate smaller sample size, perhaps less frequent. Uh, in some cases, the test may cost a lot of money. Uh, it may cost the use of human personnel, uh, uh, the collection of data, the analysis, the interpretation uh, of the analysis outcome. All of this is time consuming. Uh, uh, so you need to have understanding of the quality status and that's why the first chapter was extremely important where are we are we at the top of our game or we are way below